So hello, Katie. How are you doing? I'm fine. How are you? <laughs> Did I pronounce your name well? Well, if you want to uh, pronounce it in, in the true American way, it's Kathy. Kathy, okay. Yeah. So did I actually say the British pronunciation or is it just Dutch uh, version of uh, your name? Well, it was just, it, it, it didn't have the long um, American A in it. <laughs> okay, so it's Katie. Kathy. Kathy, okay, okay. I still uh, got it wrong. <laughs> and can I actually also ask you, how do you pronounce your last name? Pronounce your last name? Davis. Davis, okay, well, that's that's easier. I uh, thought it was something maybe like Davies or something, but uh, yeah. well, uh, uh, good to know. Um, so give you, can you give us a, a short introduction uh, uh, of who you are, especially for the people who might not be familiar with you? Um, well, if we're in, in terms of this program, um, I'm someone who has, I'm a sociologist who's written a book about um, tango. So I've inter interviewed um, dancers about their experiences with, uh, with tango and their experiences in the salons and um, both in Amsterdam and in Buenos Aires. So, um, and the other thing that is, um, that I should say is that I've been dancing tango myself for um, trying to figure out how long it is now, 23 years. Okay. Um, so I'm, uh, um, and I would say tango is probably, you know, up, up there with one of the most important things in my life. Um, and yeah, what else? Oh yes, and for the, ever since 1999, I've, I've been going to Buenos Aires to dance tango. And as it often happens, um, you know, you start going for three weeks and then the next time three and a half weeks and, and it just kept getting longer and longer and longer. And so the last uh, four years before the pandemic start, started, I was actually living there for four months a year, kind of combining it with my work and obviously dancing all the time. <laughs> and um, so that was cut short with the pandemic. In fact, I was, I was in Buenos Aires uh, when the pandemic Burning. started okay. and um, had to go into lockdown. It was a really strict lockdown in Buenos Aires and, and very everyone very frightened and, and insecure and all of the flights were canceled and I ended up having to be um, um, repatriated. Um, the, the, the embassy um, arranged a, a, a flight. So it was quite um, the quite Dutch uh, embassy. Dramatic. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So that was so I and I haven't been back since then, much okay. to my great, great sorrow. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, I recently <laughs> um, interviewed someone who uh, I think it was my last uh, interview, um, someone who actually went there in uh, in, in November. Um, yeah. So it's uh, it must be a very interesting experience. Uh, you know, who knows when you'll be back, but uh, it will be... Uh... Well, I hope, I was very gratified to hear his experiences um, and it made me feel a lot better because I, uh, I, I actually have booked a flight for the end of February for a month, just, just to kind of see what's, what's going on and see, see my friends who I haven't seen uh, for all these years. Um, so if, if all goes well, then I'll be able to go at the end of February. Okay, okay. So alone or with your husband or? Yeah, with my husband. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Well, that's very uh, interesting. So what, what do you yeah. say, one month? Yes, we'll go for one month and kind of see how it is. And um, our friends have been warning us, you know, you shouldn't expect that it's going to be like the way it was. And, you know, it's just, it's just kind of um, to go and see people and see, you know, kind of check out the situation and then Hopefully we can go back to going going there for four months a year. That's my goal. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, well, that's great. That's great. Yeah. Uh, I actually uh, spoke to someone uh, a few days ago who said she has been like uh, someone from Buenos Aires who said uh, who uh, was at home with uh, COVID, but um, previously she had been uh, dancing for over five months. I mean that's that's just incredible. So um, it's actually been like there, there have been milongas uh, for a few months now, and they've been uh, well popular. And, uh, and, and I've, I guess if I if I have to uh, believe uh, 
the last uh, interview I did, um, it's been uh, almost as busy as ever, like uh, mm -hmm. seemingly normal. So, yeah. Um, and yeah, and this because this uh, person told me that, um, well, she had been dancing for uh, for four months now. I mean, just before getting infected. I mean, that's that's yeah, that's as normal as as you uh, as, as yeah. Yeah. For us, that's uh, that's a really strange uh, situation because uh, we've not been able to uh, dance uh, normally for several months now. So, uh, mm -hmm. and even then, uh, it wasn't uh, the same as it uh, used to be. And uh, if you listen to these stories from Buenos Aires, it just seems uh, uh, like things have uh, returned a bit uh, back to normal in uh, one way or mm -hmm. another. So, uh, I'm sure you're really looking forward to. Uh, oh well, I am. Um... <laughs> I had uh, here actually um, there were there were some months that we were able to dance um, here in Amsterdam um, and I have to say that was the first time um, I went to a salon where you could only go as a couple and dance with each other and that was a very mixed feeling for me because you're sitting at your own little table um, and everyone is just kind of looking at each other um, it, it was very kind of stiff and unpleasant and in a way it made me feel worse than I already did because it, it just was so not the way a salon should be. But then later um, they opened it up so we were able to change partners um, with, a, um, with a QR uh, with, with a Corona passport. And the first time that happened, I have to say it was just the, the joy in the in the salon, it was it was palpable. I mean, you could feel how here were all these people, and they kind of you could tell they were coming out of they were coming out of the pandemic. I mean, they were all a little they all had some Corona kilos, and they had bad haircuts, and they were looking a little, you know, like they didn't quite know whether they could still dance or not. <laughs> and then, but the joy of, of, of the, you know actually dancing with each other, it was just that that was actually a wonderful experience. I mean, I think, um, of course, it makes you appreciate uh, appreciate more what you've missed. Mm. Yes, yes. But, uh, well, let's hope uh, you'll um, get an even further appreciation of uh, <laughs> what tango is supposed to be when you return to Buenos Aires. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, we got a bit off track uh, there, but uh, uh, how did you uh, how did you discover uh, tango? How did you start uh, dancing yeah. stuff like that? Uh, well, I would have to go back all the way to the 1980s, um, and as, I think this is the first time I discovered tango. Um, and it was I was it was a Friday evening in Amsterdam, and I was walking around with a friend of mine. We were kind of looking for something to do on a Friday evening, and we saw this sign. It was actually at the old Roxy, which was a cultural center in in Amsterdam, which doesn't exist anymore. And there was a sign for a tango salon, and we looked at each other. You know what is that? <laughs> <laughs> and so we just decided, you know, why not? We went in, we, 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 we paid something and went in and sat down at a table and just, and I just, you know, the things that I noticed were just, I'll, I'll never forget. The first thing I thought, what is this? They're dancing to this old fashioned music in Spanish. Why are they doing this? <laughs> that was the first thing. And these kind of, kind of scratchy music that was being played from kind of scratchy records. I thought, you know, I could, I couldn't figure it out. And then the second thing was, there they were, all these different people, you know, from different walks of life, locked in this in this close embrace. And this was a, this was the um, time when people never touched each other when they were dancing. I mean, I don't know if this was before your time, but this was like the punk era, and you were pogoing, you know, far apart from each other. No one ever touched each other when they were dancing. So, you know, I thought, wow. <laughs> people are you know in this embrace so that was you know that just was intriguing and then I and 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 the uh, and the last thing was um I, I mean obviously not they couldn't all dance beautifully or anything but every once in a while a, 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 a couple would kind of sail by they were beautiful dancers and I saw the expression on this woman's face and I just thought oh I want I want to know what that feels like <laughs> So that that was really, I think that was the beginning of my 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 interest in tango. So it was always kind of at the back of my mind that it was, 
uh, something I would be interested in in learning how to do. And it wasn't until you know in the '90s really that I had this brilliant idea um, to um, give my <laughs> my husband ten tango lessons as a Christmas present. <laughs> so. So, um, you know, and his first reaction was, um, oh, I'd rather learn salsa. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> but, yeah, but uh, that's actually, he's, he's a much better uh, tango dancer than he would have been a salsa dancer. So we, 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 um, we took these 10 lessons and the first lesson, the, 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 the introductory lesson, which I will never forget, you know, they, they showed us what was basically just the basic step. That was it you know, what, what you do in a, your first lesson. And then we went to the Milonga afterwards. I mean, I'm kind of ashamed to say that now that we actually dared to do this, but we went out on the floor and we danced for hours just with this one ba basic step that we had learned. <laughs> Okay, what a, so much going around and around. I mean, I hate to think what whether we were bumping into people on the on the floor or making a nuisance of ourselves, but that's what we did. And um, and I would say, you know, I never I, we never looked back after that. I mean, took you know took all of the lessons and workshops, and you know, so that's been going on for years ever since then. But that was that was basically how it started. So how come you, uh, it took you like 10 years to? Um... I don't know, I was, I guess I was doing other things. I wasn't, um, yeah, I was, I was writing my dissertation, for example, I was busy with yeah. that. I just wasn't, um, you know, it, it just, I just never quite got around to doing it. But, um, but then once I, once I did, once we took the lessons, I never, ever, I, I've never had a tango dip um, ever since then. Okay. I mean, there, there have been times when I when I dance a little less, or you know, but um, you know, I've danced it ever since. Okay. And um, and then the first time, maybe that's a good story too. The first time I went to Buenos Aires, um, um, my my husband and I decided um, this would have been in 1999. Um, we decided to give a big party to kind of celebrate the fact that we'd we were still together after all these years and we invited all of these people to this party and they as a present they gave us um a, a, a trip to buenos aires right. okay <laughs> so so it was just it was just this fantastic so we went and um i remember it was for three weeks and we spent about one week of that time writing thank you cards to all of these people who <laughs> sent us to Buenos Aires. But um, so that was the first time. And that was, um, I mean, we traveled a little bit in, in Argentina and sort of went, went to the, the salons. We were with a group of, um, of uh, Dutch people staying in a tango hotel. And, um, and it just was, it was fantastic. Obviously, to totally different than than the way I experienced Buenos Aires uh, now, but um, uh, I just I, I just remember being in this kind of you know um, going to all of the night salons and dancing until four o'clock in the morning, and then coming coming to some cafe and having coffee, and then going to bed at about seven or eight in the morning and sleeping all afternoon, and you know this whole kind of life was so, <laughs> was so. Um, yeah, um, amazing. So different than my than my life at home, obviously. So are you saying that's not the way you would spend your time in Buenos Aires later, or? No, later that changed. I mean, the, all of that changed. Um, um, the, uh, when we started going longer and longer and longer and longer and combining it with um, with work, normal so life. Yeah, yeah. With with normal life, so that I started taking. Um, writing projects that I had, I would take them with me to Buenos Aires, mm -hmm. and then, then we had just kind of a normal, a normal life. I mean, we would, we actually, we belonged to a, um, uh, to a gym, for example. We get up pretty early in the morning and go to the gym, oh, and then we'd come back and we'd, we'd have, uh, we'd work for a while, and then we'd go shopping and we'd have lunch, and, and then we'd uh, maybe go swimming, and then. Um, work some more and then we started going to the what they call the afternoon salons which are you know they start about five or six 
and that was that we did that every day but the, that that was kind of so then we would get back at about maybe 10 o'clock and we'd have dinner with friends sometimes and you know that was more that was more our life so we could combine tango with a kind of a regular life in Buenos Aires. Yes, I guess uh, there's also the initial initial uh, excitement or honeymoon period that um, somehow fades a bit, even though you're probably still pretty enthusiastic. Uh, I don't know. I, it changed. I think it changed the things um, that I li liked or I was looking for in in, in tango. I mean, now um, when when I when I go to salons now, I um, I've, I. I know so many of the dancers, you know, they're kind of the people I dance with and I dance with them every year and um, we know each other. I socialize with some of them. And, you know, so that's, um, it feels much more like my community. And, and, um, and, and in the early days, it was just, it was just um, exciting and, and novel. And, you know, I was trying to figure it out. I think that's another thing. The first years um, I was, I was spending a lot of time just trying to figure out how the salons work, you know, because I think we, we have no idea, or I had no idea. I mean, just to begin with, the first salon I went to, I could not figure out how they were actually dancing with each other. I couldn't, they weren't going to each other's tables and asking each other to dance. So suddenly they all appeared on the floor and it took me a long time to figure out what, <laughs> how that worked. Um, and then, um, and then, you know, kind of studying the cabaseo, uh, you know, how, how that, how you actually do the cabaseo and, and um, how hard it was for me. And I think for many European um, and North American um, women, you know, to, to kind of maintain, um, to, 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 look, uh, to look around and maintain um, eye contact where it could be everything in you wants to look away. And if you do that, then you're not going to dance. So, so you know, I had to, I had to learn to do all of that. And then, of course, in the beginning, you know, you're trying to do the cabaseo by, you know, uh, and yeah. uh, of course, oh, who right wants here. to dance with you? Who wants to dance with somebody who's doing that? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. so then, you know, that, so so all the and then um, and and then all of the 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 joys of learning to play with the and to communicate with people with your eyes when they're dancing by and in all kinds of situations. I mean, that is one of my favorite parts of the, of the salon culture. I think it's fabulous. I love it. <laughs> yeah, so hard. all of that was, and so that was all kind of um, developing that as, as we went along. Or another thing was, well, of course we were taking classes and workshops and private lessons and all the things that people do um, as they're learning uh, tango. Um, but at a certain point, we, we started, um, well, first of all, when we first started going to salons, we, we sat together, but that's still fun because you just dance with each other. No one dances with you. You so, mean in Buenos Aires? In Buenos Aires. Yeah, so because here, quick, here it's different, right? Yeah, here it's different. But um, so pretty quickly, we, we decided to sit separately. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and that was really the beginning of everything. That was, that was really, really important. I mean, for one thing, I, I uh, met a lot of Argentinian women and had um, conversations with them. And I learned a lot about tango um, from them. Um, but of course, I also got, um, I, I danced a lot more and it was just more exciting. But one of the things uh, my husband and I used to do is that we'd come back, we'd come back from the salon and we'd uh, compare notes about how, about our dancing experiences. And we'd try to um, teach each other what we had learned from our, from our dancers. So I'll give you an example. I was saying, you know, I dance milongas with these with these men and it feels like I've been a rocking boat. And um, so we started, I started practicing with him, you know, how can he make me feel like I've been a rocking boat when we dance the milonga? <laughs> and, um, and something similar for him, he was saying how, how soft um, the women feel when you dance with them. And that was really hard, hard to figure out what, he, what, what, he, what that means to dance softly. So uh, my first reaction was to, you know, kind of make myself into a limp dish rag, <laughs> and that's not that didn't work at all. 
And so we were kind of, we kept kind of practicing and trying to see if, if, if we could get that sensation of dancing softly. And he said at a certain point, he said, um, it's kind of like plucking, which means to like your, what do you, what is the, what is the English word for plucking? It's like you, oh. you're, you're kind of glued together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. that's what feels soft. So I thought, oh, I can do that. <laughs> So, so then we started um, um, practicing so that I was, I was just absolutely glued to him. And he said, that's it. Oh, you're such a soft dancer now. <laughs> so I, so um, I think really the most important things I learned for salon dancing were, were, was that kind of learning. I mean, learning from the dancers in the salons and talking about it and, you know, yeah. I suppose that's still happening. I mean, if you're the last few years in Buenos Aires that you're still uh, somehow picking up things. Oh yes, I mean, I for me it's a it never it never stops. It, I I never stop learning things um, um, in the salons. But but uh, you know, as I say, I think I personally I learn more from dancing in the salons than than in workshops or or from you know. The, the the tango stars that's a, really where i learned what at least what i want to learn for dancing uh, tango yes uh, yes so just by doing and maybe also by watching yeah by watching um i love to i have um i, I love to sit in a in a in an argentinian tango salon and and just it, for me it's like a fellini film <laughs> All these, these, these people, and all the, all the, the, the little histories that are going on on the dance floor, and then, you know, now I have uh, women I talk to, and they're giving me all the, the inside information about, you know, the, 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 the romantic life of all the different, all right. <laughs> the different dancers. Yeah. So, so you know, I have, um, I mean, it's, it's totally entertaining, um, uh, e even without the dancing. Yes, yeah. yes. It's just like the whole, um, well, I, I always um, like to raise a kind of uh, controversial point, but I think I did the same in the last interview when we were talking about Buenos Aires, that a lot of people in Europe, for example, um, they go to Encuentro, Encuentros uh, nowadays, and they, they maybe find something there that uh, they used to go to find in Buenos Aires, so they don't really need Buenos Aires anymore. But my personal theory or my, my personal my personal taste is um that i just like when you're in buenos aires you're just immersed in the in argentinian culture and it's something yeah. that's that's always going to be uh just a mimicry uh, just a copy uh, somewhere else um mm -hmm. so um and I'm, i guess from these stories uh, you tell uh i kind of hear the hear the same uh, sentiment well, I have I have kind of strong um, <clears throat> I have strong opinions about this too. I, I'm not, um, uh, and I agree with you. I'm not. Um, I would never criticize someone else who who loves to go to encuentros and festivals. And I mean, I know that's um, a project for for a lot for a lot of people, for friends. Um, but it's not my project. It's absolutely not my project. And I um, I, I like local salons. And they don't have to be in Buenos Aires. They can be here or they can be in other. If I travel, I love to go to a local salon and see what, what's going on there. I mean, you, you, know, you can have great experiences. But I, the encuentros for me are a different, it's a whole different uh, ball game. I'm not, um, I'm not into encuentros. And then I have this, um, my worry about the encuentros is that they, they, they are undermining uh, the local salons mm. all over the world, including in Buenos Aires. So a lot of the people who are seriously into tango are no longer going to Buenos Aires and no longer going to local salons, including their own local salons. And instead, they just have their whole, they have a whole encuentro life. And I think that's um, um, unfortunate for the, uh, yeah, for the local tango scene. Yeah, that's an interesting perspective, actually. I never thought of, about it that way, but yeah. uh, that's true. Um, yeah. Because, uh, yeah, I, re I remember when when asking people like, uh, "Are you coming to this uh, blah 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 this Sunday?" 
and then uh, now I'm going to an Encuentro or something. And then, yeah. I mean, it's really fun to go to an Encuentro, but for me, it's less fun that this person is yeah. going to be uh, absent. So uh, yeah, yeah. I, never, I never actually thought uh, of it uh, that way, but it, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. But it's also, well, a, yeah. yeah, no, no, go ahead. Well, the other thing is um, that um, there, there kind of slips this, uh, this, this um, attitude slips into the Encuentro scene. And that is about, you know, when people explain why they like to go to Encuentros, then they say, well, they're all good dancers, they say. That's where you can get the good dancers. And I've always had problems with what that means, the, the, the good dancers. I don't know what, you know, for, does that, does that mean someone who knows the steps, who's someone who knows the rules? Um, you know, for, for, I, I, can't, I can't really, I, when I think of the people that I like to dance with, I don't necessarily think of them as good dancers. I mean, maybe they are good dancers sometimes, but there are all kinds of reasons that I like to dance with someone. And I, I, it doesn't fit under this category, good dancer. Um, yeah, I guess one advantage is um, that's maybe less personal, but more um, uh, objective in a way that uh, what people like about, about those places that you, uh, that the floor is just way more uh, orderly and people are more um, um, conscious of, of each other's uh, space. Um, yeah. when dancing and that's something that uh, yeah that can usually those are factors that that can annoy people in local uh, areas with uh, yeah. varying levels even though that's more democratic in a way so, yeah uh, well I understand that I mean I understand that people uh, and and I, that's actually one thing I, I quite like about the encuentros I've been to that they they do have an orderly floor and I think it's very nice if someone stops and lets you in <laughs> and um um, so there's a certain politeness and, and, and respect for, for one another, which I think is a good thing, for sure. But I guess you also have that in, uh, in the right places in Buenos Aires, right? Not necessarily. Okay, okay. <laughs> I mean, sometimes, the, sometimes the floors are terrible, um, you know, the, the, that's, the, so I have very mixed feelings about that, but sometimes it's, it, it's entertaining uh, to see how they manage all of these um, um, mishaps on the floor, um, but okay. No, I mean basically, I'd rather have a or, an orderly floor. But <laughs> okay. so, can you uh, that that uh, that's already something I wanted to ask uh, earlier. But can you mention some places that you like, some milongas that you like? Um, in in Buenos Aires. Yes. Um, okay. Well, it's sort of. It, now a lot of them oh, actually your last um, guest I mean a lot of the, the 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 salons that he mentioned are the ones that I go to to I mean the ones I like and and and, and so it would it's the salon and um, I, I used to go to Grisel and um, uh, Consagrados uh, Leonesa uh, on Saturday and Obelisco, which is that it has closed down. That's that's too bad because um, I I I used to like to go there. Um, um, Lucy's uh, salon on Monday, which used to be in Obelisco, but now is in Grisel. So there are a lot of changes now. But those are the the salons where I know uh, where I've known the where I know the people, and I've been dancing with them for years. Yes. 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 So it's uh, very much a, a certain scene, right? It is, I, yeah, it's kind of a, it, and obviously it's not exactly the same people in there. There's some, there's some uh, uh, changes and some people go, and Cunning, Cunning, for example, I really like uh, Cunning, um, but some people don't go to Cunning because it's a little farther away. Mm. Um, so, you know, there, there's, a, there's overlap, but they're not identical scenes but they're all but they're all people who who are not um not into the nightlife i mean they're not they're not dancing until four in the morning they're going to these um they're going to these uh, so-called afternoon salons so they they still have a the way i see it they still have kind of a life um in addition to their to tango <laughs> yes but i would say there are actually three categories like you have these actual what they call matinees 
and then you have normal evening milongas and then you have the actual nightlife which lasts mm -hmm. uh, but but uh, I, I guess you yeah. you mean the, the evening uh, salons right like uh, uh, well, Maipu that's different. So, so, yeah, Maipu or, um, for example, Consagrados uh, on Saturday. Yeah, that's a bit earlier. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's a kind of an afternoon salon, I would say. Yes, 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 yes. But that's actually the only one I can uh, think of that is uh, on par with, with, with the others, because, mm -hmm. uh, in my personal opinion, uh, some of these uh, matinee uh, milongas, uh, you know, I, I don't like the the level, so to say. I mean, that sounds a bit arrogant, but I mm -hmm. I just prefer uh, when I have the choice. I just prefer going to these evening milongas, like the ones yeah. you mentioned and the one yeah. my uh, last guest uh, mentioned. Um, yeah. And then you have the 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 the, the not more than the nightlife scenes, so to say. And yeah, well, I do remember going. Um, for example, if one milonga stops at eleven, you might go to another one, and then. Uh, yeah. It lasts until two o'clock or three o'clock, but there's even more options that are, that just go uh, go on uh, longer yeah. during the night. And uh, yeah. I guess that's something that, you were doing in the beginning, right? But you don't. Yeah, do that, that was something I was doing yeah, in the yeah. beginning, and I just thought it, it just was so exciting, and um, uh, I wouldn't have wanted to miss that experience, not for the world. But that's not the not that's not what I do now. No, no, no. You just prefer to integrate uh, tango in your yeah. normal life. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah. That actually brings me to one of the questions. So, especially uh, so the last uh, decade, so to say, the last few years. So, what does tango mean in your in your life, and what does Buenos Aires mean in your life? And I think we've already discussed some aspects of that. But yeah. Um, um, well. Well, let me start with Buenos Aires, um, and and we've talked about this before, but. Um, so I was born in the United States and I've lived in, in the Netherlands for, first I lived in Germany and then I've lived in the Netherlands for uh, 30 years. Um, I'm totally integrated in the Netherlands. I have a, have a, I have a Dutch passport, I've worked in the Netherlands. I speak Dutch, all of that. Um, but I have never ever felt that I really belonged here. I mean, I always feel that I'm kind of uh, on the outside, and that's never going to change. And that's just the way it is. Um, and the first time I went to Buenos Aires, or when I started going to Buenos Aires, I found that I was getting something that I had missed all those years living in the Netherlands. Um, I felt included. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. I just, um, I, that, whatever their whatever their, their faults, and they, they have many faults, but Argentini, Argentinians are very good at making you feel included. And they have, they have, they have skills for doing that. Um, it's impossible to go to a, a party in Buenos Aires or a barbecue or whatever and sit, sit on the sidelines. I mean, you're just immediately, everyone does it. They just pull you right in and you're part of the, you're, 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 you're part of the group. And, and it just, I felt that kind of was healing for me. I mean, it kind of resolved something that had a kind of a, a, um, a, a pain that I had <laughs> for, for so many years. So, so in a way, going to Buenos Aires was, was for me, it's like, oh, now my, now my life is complete. Now I have everything I need in my life to be, um, to, feel, to feel good. And so for me, it's absolutely a disaster that I can't go to, to Buenos Aires uh, or haven't been to Buenos Aires uh, for the last few years. It felt... <laughs> you feel more lonely in maybe in a way. Yeah, I just, I felt that something, you know, really uh, something had just been kind of ripped out of my, my heart. <laughs> um, yeah, so... So that so so that and the tango tango is obviously I love dancing tango there and and I, when I'm there I do it almost every day and it's you know most of my friends there have something to do with with tango you know so it's 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 very central to my to my life but it's more than that it's 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 biographically it's <laughs> it's important for me. Yes. Um, and we we were talking about 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 the language. I mean, 
Um, the Dutch are very uh, kind of no nonsense, um, not not into flowery compliments or anything like that. And I just my heart just goes um, opens up when I'm in Buenos Aires and 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 I see someone and they say, Ah, preciosa, say te, te quiero, te quiero. <laughs> you know, it's just. Um, that people can say that, and and you know when you're in in the Netherlands, you think, does she really love me? Um, um, am I really precious? <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know the way you would would think about it in um, in the Netherlands, but there it's just it's just warm, and I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's just a part of uh, how people communicate with each other, yeah. even if it doesn't necessarily always mean. Uh, means what no, it, I, I don't know what it means, but I've also discovered that it doesn't matter what it means because uh, so much of, and that's another thing, that's an important lesson from the milongas, uh, the salons in Buenos Aires, and people go, go there to feel better, and they have hard lives. I mean, most of us have hard lives one way or the other, and you go there to feel good and to have some time, time away from all of the problems in your life and, and other people are going to help you do that. You're going to help each other, you know, feel better just for, just for a few hours. And, um, and I think, and, and, and so there are whole, lots of things it, that are going on in the Milonga are kind of geared toward making fee, people feel better. I mean, let, let, for example, you know, I told you, I, I, I love the cabaceo so much and I like all the kind of the playfulness of the cabaceo and the, um, the, 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 the communication with eye contact. And a lot of it is, is actually about flirting. It's a kind of flirting. So you're, you're kind of flirting with your partner, you're flirting with other people in the tango salon. And flirting is a, is a, is a skill or an activity that has pretty much disappeared from the Netherlands, if it ever was part of Dutch culture. I think it's just not something people do. Um, Whereas there, everyone does it all the time, and it feels good. It it makes your life more pleasant, you know. So I, um, it doesn't have to mean anything. Um, it doesn't have to mean anything more than that. Just that momentary, you know, giving someone a nice compliment, or um, uh, that's that's all it is. But that's that's a that's a lot. Well, that's very profound. Yeah. Yeah, these cultural differences are uh, maybe also what, um, in a sense, uh, keeps attracting you to um, just being in that environment, to be immersed in, uh, yeah. in a different world. Man, maybe something, uh, one other thing, um, well, I obviously I could go on forever about this, but one other thing um, that I think is pretty unusual there, and um, that it's about presence. Um, so when you're talking to someone there, they're just completely there in the conversation with you. I mean, they're there. They're not, they're not looking over their shoulder like this, or they're look, not looking at their clock. Uh, they're not, um, their mind isn't somewhere else. They're with you there at that moment. And maybe, maybe um, five minutes later, they will have forgotten you entirely. That's possible. But in that moment, you know, you feel like they're, and, and, I've noticed this with people, even people who have really hard jobs. And, and I mean, for example, um, early on, um, we used to stay in a, in a room above a bakery. And so we would go down into the bakery sometimes to talk to the, the two bakers who were just enormously busy. It was around Christmas time. So they had, they had so much work and there were people in the, in the bakery and it was just, you know, it was chaotic. But you go in there and and start talking to one of them, and it's like they drop everything and they're there. They're listening to you. They're talking to you, and so and that's something um, you 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 don't see that uh, you you hardly see that here. People are distracted. You know, their their mind is elsewhere. <laughs> yes, but it might mean the so uh, society works better as a whole, but for an individual. You might feel a bit uh, more um, anonymous or excluded, or yeah. Well, no doubt about it. Dutch Dutch society is. I mean, we have high productivity. It's a it's a 
um, well-functioning uh, society, certainly compared to Argentina. So, you know, I, I can't make an, a, a general statement about one being better than the other, but uh, just personally and, and what, what, why I love so much being there has something to do with this, this presence and the, and the, the, the warmth and the flirting and <laughs> all of that. Yeah. And maybe before we um, move on to your uh, your book, which is uh, an, a separate, uh, or maybe not so separate topic, because it's probably all uh, intertwined. But um, so maybe more in general, but like your daily life, not in Buenos Aires, in the Netherlands. So what does tango mean to you there? Is it like the same that you can find this uh, companionship or something or? Uh, um. Yes, I mean, I've been, ever since I started dancing tango, I dance tango when I can. I dance at least uh, once a week or twice a week. Um, I don't, I don't travel, I don't travel around too much in, 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 in the Netherlands to dance tango a bit. But um, I think part of that, and to be honest, part of that has been that my, I've kind of, my, my tango life is so kind of tied to Buenos Aires in the last few years. So when I'm here, it's kind of like I'm I'm I, I, I'm still dancing, but but the um, what's what's been the most important for I'm kind of waiting to go there again. Mm, yes, yeah, so, so I I think that's 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 kind of changed. So so it, it's really important for me to be able to dance here. It's not, and I have lots of people I I love to dance I, I love to dance with them and. You know, so I, 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 I couldn't miss it. Well, I've had to miss it, <laughs> like we all have. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, probably by, I, I often think um, here, if I'm disappointed with, with a salon here, then I then I'm tell myself, oh, well, it doesn't matter because she'll be in Buenos Aires in a month. And, you know. and does that happen in Buenos Aires as well, the disappointment? Um, well, there are always uh, salons that are less uh, pleasant than other salons. Yeah, of course, there's always a, a, a disappointing salon. But um, on the whole, I would say I, I pretty much love the salons I go to. <laughs> okay. okay, okay. And and it's also because there are always so many. There there are different aspects of them. I mean, I could go to a salon. Maybe maybe I'm not uh, not as happy with the dancers, or I don't have any wow as my my. My friend always says he wasn't a wow dancer, <laughs> so that that could happen. But then <clears throat> I always have um, I always have uh, conversations with people that I that I enjoy, or there are things I see happening on the dance floor that I enjoy. So it's it, it's never there's always something. Yes, yes. Well, that's very uh, very interesting, especially. Well, I was I was just thinking of the, the, the these these um, um, typical things that, that you, you like the, the way seats are divided and um, the way you are you're brought to your seat by a, a waiter or sometimes the organizer and the way um, you're somehow just supposed to get a drink and. It's very important that you have that drink. I mean, commercially, it's important, but it's also part of the of the whole. Uh, uh, um, it, it, it's like a very fixed uh, set of, of rules and habits that 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 they're just seen as natural over yeah. there. And if you're here, it, uh, these things just don't happen. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I really, um, I I have to say, I love the fact that there's this separation and that you have your own table. And you're sitting with I, I I like having a table where I'm sitting with um, with uh, a friend a woman or or a, a group of women um, and and I, I think it makes the cabaseo a lot easier um, I like the the camaraderie um, at the table that, that's part of sorry I have, to, I, have, I have to laugh a bit because you know, it might just be my experience, but I always imagine this this female section or the female sections of a milonga to be this one big party and with the men just, just being silent and not talking to each other and, and just not being interested in each other. I'm not sure oh, if that's no, actually... That, a, 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 no, a, no, I, I don't think that's true because I think the men, I know, I know for a fact that the men also have lots of 
conversations. And so, I mean, and this is part of the uh, part of the salon uh, um, culture. But I mean, if you have a good, not all of the there's also a lot of competition and, and sometimes it can be very unpleasant, but if you have a good table, um, then you can really, it kind of, uh, um, it adds to the enjoyment of the salon. So if the salon is not going too well, <clears throat> we'll look at each other, we'll say, um, I think we need some bubbles here. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. That's not what we'll get. So we'll get a bottle of champagne and we'll, you know, we'll toast to each other. And then, and then, um, or sometimes uh, I, uh, one of the women I sit with is she has a very um, sarcastic sense of humor. <laughs> so she makes us really comment comments about the various dancers out on the floor. And it's just, it's, it's, it's hilarious. I mean, I'm glad they don't hear what she's saying about them, but for us, you know, sitting there, it's um, it's very entertaining, and uh, uh, so she, and then she'll get up at the end. She'll get up at the end, and she'll look at us all, and she'll say, "Ladies, I'm leaving them all to you." Well, that's a good thing. <laughs> now you how you just build up these relations with people, and uh, wow. and something that happened to me. This was also something I learned early days in the salon when I started sitting with women are sitting separately from my husband. And I was sitting at a table with a woman who had never given me the time of day. I mean, she was, you know, really uh, didn't, didn't greet me, didn't acknowledge me in any way. And I'm sitting there. And at some point, um, a, a, a man, a dancer came over to me and wanted to dance with me. And he was standing right in front of me. And he was, and he was saying, uh, Kathy, let's dance, let's dance. And I didn't want, I didn't want to dance with him that way. And I said, no, no, and, and no. <laughs> and then he left and the woman suddenly looks at me and she said, she said, oh, este hombre, que terrible, que terrible, que terrible. And she, uh, she offers me uh, some of her champagne and we were, we were friends. So, I mean, it was, a, I realized that you, you kind of gain respect. You, you have to, these women have to respect you and see you as not just a, a, a stupid tourist who doesn't know, who doesn't have any self-respect in terms of how she manages the dances. So you kind of have to, you know, earn their respect. So that was a good lesson for me. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I love these uh, all these stories from uh, <laughs> how uh, how it actually how life actually looks like over there and yeah. how it can be different uh, from here in so many ways. Yeah, I also saw you know there's so many things that um, I mean uh, most or many Dutch people think that that's just ridiculous that that men and women sit separately and and ever heard of emancipation and all of that. But I actually have very different um, ideas about it. Um, I, re I remember early on going to Confiteria Ideal, which was a, an old, old salon. And um, there were these little single tables al along the wall with the mirror. And there, were, there would be one woman sitting at each table. And there they would sit with their fan, a glass of water, um, maybe breath mints, <laughs> their shoe bag would be under the table. And there they would sit these, and they were often um, older women and they would sit there. <clears throat> and I realized looking at them and watching how they, uh, how they managed the salon, I thought, wow, you know, this uh, talk about emancipation. I mean, here are women, uh, solo women going to a salon, sitting at a table, looking around, looking at who they want to dance with. and figuring out who they want to dance with, who they don't want to dance with, uh, trying to, you know, organize a, a, a dance with this person. And I thought, <clears throat> I mean, these, these women were so, so powerful and so not, um, I thought, you know, um, Dutch women, European women can learn a lot from these women about going after what you want, you know, the, the, the things that you, I mean, take, taking your own desires seriously and going for them. So that's what I actually learned from these from these women sitting at their tables. <laughs> but there's another side to it, I guess. I think um, these women 
might be just as emancipated as, as women here in the sense that they have their, their own job and they might be single and they have their own income and their own home and whatever, totally yeah. uh, modern. But there's still someone somehow uh, allowing themselves to be uh, feminine. And yes. uh, I think a lot of people, uh, a lot of women who, who uh, dance here and initially struggle with the idea of following someone. Um, yeah. Because they've always had this, these ideas about, I need to do everything on my own, I need to do everything on my own. But um, being feminine is not inferior. I mean, you can yeah. be feminine and you can still be as independent as anyone else, but still want to engage in a following role, for example, without yeah. that meaning anything about your about your personal value or your life. So yeah. um, it's... Um, yeah, I think that's very different. I my my sense is, and I've I've talked to a lot of um, Argentinian women that they have maybe less problems with following. That's not such a big issue for them. They have to learn it, obviously, but they're not. It's not so loaded as it is here. I mean, and I think you're absolutely right that many women here just struggle with the idea of it. It feels to them like they're somehow capitulating <laughs> by following. And, um, and that I, I don't see that there either. And I also agree that many of these, many Argentinian women are uh, extremely independent in their, in their everyday lives. But when they go to a salon, they wanna have fun and they like the, they like the games and the, the flirting and the, you know, that it's a playful time for them. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I think the, the many comparisons uh... I've heard today are, are very interesting just between uh, culture and behavior based on culture and um, subconscious uh, beliefs. And, and, and I mean, there's, there's a lot uh, that might be a bit of a general statement, but there are a lot of things that define our behavior without us even realizing just because the way you were brought up and the culture you were born in. And if you go to Argentina, for example, well, I remember, um, I want to say this earlier as well as in response to one of your comments, but um, I remember going somewhere and being introduced to somebody and I, I gave her a hand, which is like the most normal thing to do. But she looked at me like I was really crazy for, um, for uh, maybe I, I still don't know to this day. I still don't know why. Maybe it was just way too formal to, to shake hands or maybe it's not normal for a man to, to um, I mean, maybe it should be doing this uh, one kiss uh, cheek kiss instead i have really no idea but it like these these moments are so like you just go there and you're you're like an ambassador in a, in a certain sense even without uh yeah without any voluntary uh, intent or something but you're still yeah. bringing this belief system this culture to another place and you're constantly having to translate between your own uh, what you're used to and and these other people who are very similar in many ways, but they're also different in many ways. Yeah. Yeah. So, and even if you just uh, from here, if you just cross the border to Germany, there's so, so many things that are going to be very different, even though the cultures are quite similar. Yeah, that's true. And, uh, it's the same for you with the U.S. and 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 you came here, and and some things may may have been very strange, and you got used to it, and then. You went to the to Argentina and you you got another like layer of reality that sounds a bit pretentious but it's like a layer of of, of just the way people are and you um, you just have to gradually get used to how things are done in a certain place and and you were integrated in their culture simply by constantly interacting with with people in the um, in the milongas but also in that bakery and just daily life and yeah. uh, well, you, you, um, I, I think that's the joy of it, going to another place, and um, it's the joy of going to a, a new salon or the, going going to a new um, a new city, or you know, it's kind of seeing what what it's like and how it's different than what you're used to, and um, yeah, that's 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 one of the joys of life. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and um, well, I, I um, we'll have to talk about your book another time, I guess. But uh, <laughs> I kind of expected that in one way or another. But there's just so many things to say about, um, and and of course that any, anything that's discussed here will eventually tie into uh, 
what your book is about. Yes. Um, but this is like the, the framework for probably why you uh, why you wrote that book in the first place. It is <laughs> because you're 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 just constantly talking about these everyday experiences. Uh, yeah, with, with I, I didn't watch. I didn't. Um, well, there are a lot of things I could say about the book, but just one thing. Um, I didn't want to, I, I wanted to talk to people about their, um, why they were passionate about tango and, and what it meant in, in their lives and how it changed their lives. And I, I avoided talking to professionals, so professional dancers or salon organizers or um, DJs. I, not, I, it's not that I didn't talk to any of them, but that the main the main thing I was interested in is just ordinary, ordinary t tango dancers, and um, all I cared about was whether they were kind of passion or whether they were passionate about dancing tango. So if they were just taking lessons because they wanted a hobby, I didn't I wasn't interested in talking to them, and some of them were 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 beginners. You know, they they could hardly dance tango, but I could tell watching them on the dance floor that they had it you know I mean they were they had you could see it in their faces that they were they had this dream <laughs> and those are so I talked to people like that and um, um, so my book is all about what this strange passion uh, passion is all about this passion that we share <laughs> yes 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 and um yeah I'm doubting a bit whether to discuss it now or you know maybe in another video, but um, mm -hmm. honestly, it's a bit of a hard choice. Um, considering uh, the time constraints and things like that. Um, well, maybe just let, let's just uh, talk about that in a, in, a, in a future conversation. And uh, okay. let's, let's just focus on another question uh, for now. Mm -hmm. That's like, how do you envision the future of your tango life and being in Buenos Aires? So I'm, I'm not just literally talking about, for example, when I, can I go to Buenos Aires again, but more the longer term, like mm -hmm. um, the rest of your life. I mean, it can be pretty philosophical. Well, I mean, <laughs> I'll tell you this, uh, Lucas, as long as I can walk, <laughs> as long as I can walk and get into a plane, <laughs> I will be going to Buenos Aires. <laughs> okay. Um, so you know, I, 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 there would be no reason for me to stop, um, stop going, uh, stop going, and uh, except if I'm, if I'm being prevented from going by something like a pandemic. Um, so that's uh, that's been, as I said, that's been terrible for me and for a lot of people. Um, but no, but I plan to just um, kind of dance till I drop. Okay. <laughs> Till you get a heart attack, like the uh, the, the ideal death for uh, for a tango dancer. Yeah. But I mean, and then, and then like the, um, a heart attack that just stops everything uh, uh, at the uh, while dancing, not not uh, the type where you uh, yeah. where you go to the hospital and then you hear you can't uh, ever dance anymore because of your heart. I mean. It, it sounds really great in theory to get a heart attack while dancing, but... Um, oh, I don't believe actually that it, I know that a lot of people say that, that that's how they want to die, but um, I, I actually think that's probably not very pleasant. I, I, I actually know someone who died in Cunning. I mean, he had a heart attack in Cunning and was taken away by an ambulance, and I, I, wouldn't, I really wouldn't want that to happen to me. That's not my... That's oh. not the way I envision. <laughs> yeah, it sounds great uh, on paper, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but it's um, it's just something that's uh, uh, so central to your life that you you can never uh, ever really imagine it without. Uh, no. Yeah, I can't. I. I mean, there may be come a time when I have to imagine. Um, That'll that'll have have to stop uh, dancing, um, although maybe not. I mean, I've seen people. That that's another nice thing about Buenos Aires. Uh, you see you see people dancing, and at a very uh, late old age, they're still dancing. So <laughs> that's kind of um, encouraging. Yes, um, you hope to keep on uh, doing that forever. Yeah, and maybe if there. Um, 
like I asked this question, what does tango mean to your in your life and Buenos Aires? And is there maybe uh, finally also some kind of general thing about yeah about Argentine culture about about uh, so uh, not not just tango. Well, I also. think what I what I already said that it it sort of pulled it it. it brought me something that I was missing all my life and 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 gave me that that missing piece and 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 um so I mean I feel I feel much happier um even with the pandemic than I did before I started going to Buenos Aires so so it was uh, that that biographically that's what it meant for me and the dancing itself I um I really, uh, I think I've always thought um, I, I come from a family where we didn't uh, we didn't really touch each other, and um, and I've always been someone who really likes um, I like to be hugged and I like to hug other people and I'm um, and 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 tango is just you know it's just this constant being hugged. <laughs> It's, it's a way to be to, to be hugged and to hug other people and I love that about it um, and, and um, well what else um, I love well this is my 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 the, the, the tango experience I think I'm always looking for I mean we all have those you know the things we're always looking for and it doesn't always happen but um, you know you're standing in front of someone um, maybe you don't know you don't know his name. Um, you, you have no idea what this what this is, uh, is a totally totally different life than yours. Um, maybe you don't even speak the same language. Um, and then what you're going to do is you're going to go into his arms and you're going to listen to this beautiful music, and we're, you're going to find each other or not. <laughs> but, you know this idea that you could. In a situation like that, you could you could touch this person. You could have this really at a very deep level connection with this person. That's why I do it. I mean, I just find that that is such such, such a fantastic experience. And especially in the world we live in, where it's all about the divisions between us. And then I think tango, you know, you could be so divided in so many ways, and yet for this for these you know, for these moments, you can be so incredibly together. <laughs> yes, yes. So, you know, for me, that's just, that's just incredible. I can't, um, you know, I want that in my life. <laughs> yeah, so even though we, we spend a lot of time talking about what makes tango so Argentinian or why tango in Argentina is different, uh, in the end, it's, uh, it still has this universal value anywhere you go, the potential. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm. I'm positive that that's why it's so popular. That 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 people need that. That they. It's it 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 it, it it's 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 deeply satisfying or deeply important for them to 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 have that kind of experience and and maybe you know maybe there are people who are afraid of that and don't want to go there I mean that's that's certainly true too but if you um, if that's what you want uh, tango is your dance <laughs> yes um, yes yes yeah I'm trying to organize some uh, thoughts about many different things currently um, so um Uh, yeah, sorry, awkward silence, but um, um, I, I, you know, I was thinking about this, this, um, what you were saying, this contrast between how you felt included in, in Argentine culture in Buenos Aires and uh, mm. in your, in like your pre, your life before Buenos Aires. Um, but I've kind of lost my my point while we started uh, talking about different maybe things, I could but... uh, this is just because I would like to tell this story so I don't know whether it it, it fits but it's also kind of the the some of the amazing things that ta tango can do for you. I remember sitting in a, a salon in Buenos Aires. It was uh, Nuevo Chique years ago, and um, my mother was uh, 
she was becoming dement. And I was extremely sad. I was losing her. Um, that's the kind of experience where you lose someone every day, you lose them a little bit more. And I, I, I loved my mother and she was a, she was a very smart woman. And we used to have great conversations about books and movies and politics. And, and I just, I was so sad to be losing her in this cruel, cruel way. So I'm sitting in Nuevo Chique and I think I was, I had tears in my eyes. I was kind of sad. And this guy comes and, and is standing in front of me and he's someone I danced with often. I don't know what his name was, I, you know, even though I danced with him many times. He was this really tall, tall guy, kind of broad, you know, hefty guy. And he's standing in front of me and I got, I stood up and he saw that I had tears in my eyes. And he just looked at me and he, he did this, he did. <laughs> and I, he just took me in his arms. I didn't have to say anything. I didn't have to explain anything. He just, he, he gave me this big hug and we danced to Desarly, I think it was. Beautiful, beautiful music. And, and I thought, wow, here you have, you can be sad. This person who you don't, you don't really know, but he's going to he's going to take care of you for this moment and let you let you be sad in a beautiful in a beautiful way. I mean, wow, really. <laughs> yes. Yeah, dude. Um, the profoundness of how how it can. Uh, yeah, how, 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 how you're like you're how your normal life and 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 this passion sometimes become so complementary in a way yeah it's just... i mean maybe you're, but maybe it's that we don't have enough opportunities in our normal life um these kinds of moments in our everyday life are where we can kind of um take a step back and I mean, actually, it's a kind of a transcendent moment. I don't know how, how, how else to describe it, but I think actually people need those moments. I mean, I think they need to, to kind of um, step outside of all the awful stuff going on and just with another person, you know, just for a moment, be outside that and, 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 and how, what, what more beautiful way to do that than, than in someone's arms and with the music. Um, I, th I think people need, I think, uh, I think people need transcendent moments, <laughs> whether it's tango or, you know, there are other ways I'm, I'm sure for doing it. I mean, maybe you feel that way when you go um, swimming in icy water, I don't know. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think, uh, I think we need that. Yeah, I guess this is more about connection with other people than, um, mm. like, it seems like most things we do are 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 very much based around ourselves, um, mm -hmm. but it creates some kind of uh, equal uh, footing. Um, and if you feel vulnerable, it can it can also sometimes be very difficult if you feel vulnerable or something's going on and then you don't like the 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 tongue the the, the, the milonga you're at. Or, or I mean, it can yeah. also be a, be a cruel thing, but when yeah. uh, when it works, it's uh, yeah. so that's actually something um, I find difficult about tango is that it's also um, because you are dependent on other people. Um, I feel like it's easier to to um, to be disappointed in one way or another when things are not uh, going mm -hmm. the way way you want. And uh, in Buenos Aires, uh, if you're staying in Buenos Aires for several months, you just know well tomorrow is going to be the next uh, opportunity. But here, you might only have one real opportunity each month, and when uh, of, of your liking, and then when it doesn't uh, feel the the way you want it to, then then it can be, uh, yeah, it, it can be a bit counterproductive. So, but I think it's good because. We always want to be in control of everything, but this is something you cannot be yeah. in control of. And you're dependent on, for example, your dance partner, other people uh, mm. to feel a certain way. So I really don't have anything else in my life that uh, just brings this same. It's, it's like a game and, and, and it's also like a game you can win and, and you can lose. And there's a lot between those things, but mm -hmm. uh, I 
I've I've experienced all these. I've experienced positive feelings. I've experienced negative feelings, but it's very authentic. Mm -hmm. You just you just feel like you're alive in 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 some way, and your daily um, yeah daily life can be very um, well boring or or. or just just plagued by problems and mm -hmm. uh, worries and and it's great if you can have this kind of escapism that is not actually harmful um, yeah <laughs> but yeah. that brings you together but closer to people and of course mm -hmm. you can still uh, have uh, um, yeah some uh, annoying experiences or, or, or but but I still uh, in general I think that the outcome is mostly positive because otherwise we wouldn't be doing it and then when you actually feel but I, I also think maybe these these negative experiences can help you um in one way or another to really be present in in the moment or to 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 actually feel like you're a human being instead of just a robot uh working a, a job and mm -hmm. uh doing the same things all over again so yeah it's 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 just uh, i think this, this this aspect of game is 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 uh is very um yeah it's 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 just very exciting so uh i hope that wasn't uh too much of a monologue but uh no it's uh talking about these things it just makes me uh yeah um uh, that, that's also what what always happens in these interviews people say things and then i um start thinking about the old things i've seen so many things times before i always get new perspectives about mm -hmm. and and it's always really good it's, i think it's healthy in a way to interact about these things to to mm -hmm. uh, exchange uh, experiences and uh, you, you find connection but you also gain these new insights so uh, i guess that's well, I've, uh, always, I've always liked your interviews uh, lucas there because they're interactive I think you yes. do a very good job with your interviews. Well, thank you very much. I'm a yes. fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'll definitely uh, keep doing it. And uh, <laughs> well, I um, I hope you are. Uh, 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 I can uh, interview you again uh, about uh, maybe this uh, this uh, different aspect um, because I think what I really like about that is that a lot of people are just dancers, and that's great. But you, but you are a sociologist and you've actually written a book um, from a certain perspective and with a certain goal in mind and you're you're like doing research like i do research in this case it's like a bit of journalism or is mm. even history with these interviews but also yeah. when i when i write about tango i i i, I think like a historian and you have mm. your own uh, perspective and yeah I, I think that's just really interesting how you can um yeah how you, how you take certain insights from totally different fields and then you apply it to something quite specific like tango or very specific even and uh, well um in case you're interested uh, i'm i'm uh, i'm looking forward to that of course you uh, <laughs> uh let's not uh, put you under under pressure here but uh it's uh it's uh yeah maybe i should have uh, started talking about uh, the book a bit earlier but i felt there was just some such a great conversation going on about these aspects about the milongas and buenos aires we, we can always have another interview <laughs> okay that's great well i'm gonna uh, say goodbye here for now but uh, thanks a lot uh, for uh, attending for uh, uh, accepting uh, the invitation and uh, well uh, i'm looking forward to uh, dancing with you one day because uh, we haven't really uh, met before so that's uh, quite uh, an interesting uh, prospect. Good to have things to look forward to. Yes, 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 especially <laughs> in these times, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, well, goodbye. <laughs>